Okay, so most AI models require that you prompt it with words in order to make adjustments. But why? Hello. Yo, Zach, Aaron. Yeah. yeah. What's up, guys? What's up? Okay, so you guys are making AI-generated 3D models. Yes. Exactly. Basically, you can speak anything into existence. It shows up on the screen, and then you just whack it on the 3D printer's hair, and then there it is. But before they explain how that works, you have to understand the problem they're trying to solve. Almost every single model forces you to explain exactly what you want in order to get results. But sometimes you want a lot more control over what you're making than what you're able to explain. I want this jacket to be a specific shade of blue, or to have this character be in a specific pose. But no matter how many times I ask it to generate, it won't get it right. Every time you say something, it generates an entire parameter panel. So it makes sliders. Yes. <laughs> sliders. It makes sliders. <laughs> Do you guys think you can make me a Lego brick? Yeah. You know, when I ask you, Aiden, a question, what the dimensions of a Lego brick are, you would think about like, oh, you know, it has like a length, height, width. So we're essentially training that thought process to an AI model so that it does that. You know, like a hundred millimeter studs. Uh, which is not really a Lego brick anymore, but... <laughs> a big thing out there with these AI tools is they're not tools that put like the user in the driver's seat, right? You just put in a prompt and you generate something random. We're making a design tool, so it's crucial that like the user can actually like iterate on the designs and the parameters makes that possible. CAD software hasn't changed much, like pretty much since its inception for the last 20 years. And, you know, there's so many people out there who want to make things. 